insightful uh, that you can take home after the session. I welcome the moderator, Mr. Prabodh Haldi, and other guests to take the sessions forward. Thank you. Prime Minister gave the talk. You like about the talk? Yes, sir. Great. So, friends, we got a fantastic uh, panel and three veterans from their three respective fields. So, we got a very good blend of panel. Mehta Saab hai, Vivek Ji hai, Taggy Saab hai. And they represent their companies and they have more than 30 years of experience, 25 to 30 years of experience. The, today what we are going to talk about, cereals, pulses, which includes pulses and cereals as staples for India, how? For the global consumption. Can somebody quickly tell me what is a cereal? Not TV cereal, no, talking about food cereal. Can you name? Anybody? Okay, we'll be having some good gift from the Haldi Ram sir. So, I'm just on behalf of Taggy sir, we will be giving some hamper, Diwali hamper. So, jaldi bolo. And we'll be giving some smart three questions, answer three hampers. Who will do this irrespective? But yes, we'll give. You don't change. Okay, she wants answer. Okay. Paper leak. Think so. Yes, I think it's a grain which can be converted into flour or something. Okay. Okay. Friends, the millet, millet, what we are talking about. Uh, but the green revolution. There was a time when India has imported a lot of uh, red rice. It used to say red rice, sir. Red rice from US. We were. Uh, before it. Those who actually are above 50, they will remember this. We were less in production and that's why it was very important for us to have a green revolution. And wheat and rice, these two commodities had made a revolution and which has made a sufficient uh, actually food security. It has helped. Pulses are various type of pulses, what you eat every day. Chickpeas, lentil, green gram, pigeon pea, kidney beans, horse bean, all Hawaii dale jitti we have. Moong is one of the great uh, source of protein. So, protein, fiber, micronutrient, these are the blade. How many are the khichadi lovers? Khichadi lovers. Super good. I am going to talk about the khichadi story also. Friends, you might recall those who are married, of course or those who have attended any of the marriage, we use akshat, akshata. Why only rice is used with akshata? Any logic? Anybody can answer this? I have written something but I want more story to this. Why only rice is being used as akshata? Why not maize? Why not wheat? Why not? Why only rice? This is, if somebody answers this, you can google it also, it's okay. Fast. You got a 30 second. Why akshata is only being made by rice, not by any other grain? And this is from last 10,000 years. Why? Akshata, yes. Anybody? No, he is taking a selfie. I can he has raised the hand. Akshata in Sanskrit. It is cultivated and available in excess. Okay. Nice try, but wrong answer. I think because you know, if you look at a building, about, you know, Union. Souls okay. And Do that. Really Should we? Uh, no, you are just saying you are a consultant. You are sir from? So I am currently in the food processing industry. Great. No, no, you are absolutely right. Supposed to be, but only I am saying supposed to be. But that's it. So you are right, sir. Rice is the only grain which is a complete pure and it is akshat. Akshat means uh, it's called as an unbreakable. It's one unbroken. That's why akshat is, is a complete, not broken. And it is a union, you rightly said. It is a bond and it is a complete and it has orasno. That's why it is using yagya also. It purifies everything and it is all scientific. I'm not talking about any Hindu rituals. I'm talking about the scientific things. Anyway, by the way, in the marriage, haldi is also used. That is also the scientific. 
millets are also mentioned in Rigveda and it is a story of some 10,000 years back we are using this. India when we got independence and Britishers particularly, they purposely killed our local industry. And it is no new thing. Absolutely is a, what they have done, they made a purposely uh, kill our local industry, kill our medium and small sectors, the MSMEs, purposely. They wanted to take a raw material to Britain, England, and then bring the processed product back to our uh, value-added product back to India and tax it. When we got independence 1950, our entire cereal production was around 50 million metric ton. And we were around 35 crore to 40 crore. Today we are 140 crore and our production is around 330 million metric ton. Good jump of the production 6 times, 7 times. Population jump of 3 times. We are self-sufficient <coughs> in the cereals today. We are exporting also to the extent. Basmati we are number one in export. Pulses, we were hardly 80 lakhs, 0.8 million metric ton. Today we are 28 or 30 also. This number will keep changing as you refer to the Ministry of Agriculture or World Bank. Different numbers, it start from 25 to 30 million metric ton. Friends, why I am giving this number? Because people do call out and I don't have any... Uh, I respect the millet story, but rice and wheat, these are the two staples, south and India, south and north, it unites. And food unites the people. Processing gives you the prosperity, but food unites the people. When you go anywhere, you eat Idli. Idli unites the South Indian to North Indian. Vadapa unites the Maharashtra to entire. Then whatever the food you eat, every state gives you some story. So rice and wheat, these are the two main pillars of the India and if we do not focus on this, people will not get what that product is which is 20 rupees a kg, rice, a poor man. 20, 25 rupees a kg we get, wheat 30, 35 rupees a kg. And huge production, total together around 250 million metric ton. You cannot replace that, you cannot think of replacing that. Yes, you have to modernize, you have to make the value addition which uh, Takisabi is going to talk. Protein, on 8th number with the smart protein conference happening, without this, that protein will not happen because the source is coming from cereals, source is coming from the oil seeds. 60 grams is our protein requirement per day. Pulses, the total production of pulses gives you around, around uh, 9 to 10 gram per, per, per person per day. That is available <coughs> pulses which we produced. Cereals gives you 15 to 20 gram. And then milk and milk product, animal product, and fruits, vegetable, if they give protein, minor amount of protein. That stands to 55 gram. We are still lacking of 15 to 20 gram of protein per person per day as a backlog. Some people may be eating 80 gram but some may not be having even 25 years. That is the problem of the protein story of India. And we need chew. That's why pulses are important. And this cereal and pulses together, just to give you uh, the all essential amino acid, if you see, all essential amino acids. If you bind today the rice, and lentil together, all essential amino acids get trapped. That is the story of kitchen. Okay, why kitchen is good? It is not because of the taste, but it is about all essential amino acids. Can somebody name the essential amino acids? So what challenges we are ahead here as a industry, as a farming based industry where we have more than 60% of the people doing a farm, value addition is very less. 
our contribution of the farming and food processing to the gdp is only 20% our population dependent on the farming and food processing is 60% to so 60% log see 20% contribute karte hai apne gdp pe isliye wo log garib hai why we are poor because our value addition is less so these are the people who are going to actually tell how the value addition how the branding how the marketing so these are the challenges branding is a big challenge we are buying as a commodity somebody told me mobile phone of 60000 we will buy on emi but 2 rupees kilo 5 rupees kilo agar rice increase ho jata hai to you and crap i'm not saying it should increase but i'm saying our mentality is that yesterday only ajay gunjanwala ji bole ki oil 3 rupees kg increase ho jata hai taxi ka bill 500 rupees उसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है पेट्रोल बढ़ गया नो प्रॉब्लम बट मिल्क ऑयल एंड पल्सेस एंड ग्रेन अगर थोड़े बढ़ गए तो हमें प्रॉब्लम होता है सो चैलेंजेस एक्सपोर्ट एंड विवेक जी इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द एक्सपोर्ट वैल्यू एडिशन टैगी साहब इज गोइंग टू टॉक ऑर्गेनिक हमारे जितिन भाई बात करेंगे ऑर्गेनिक के बारे में एंड मिलेट प्रोडक्शन ओवरऑल अजय जी आपका नाम लिया था मैंने येस्टरडे यू स्पोक अबाउट एट रुपीज ऑफ इंक्रीज इन द ऑयल सेम वेज इन द पल्सेस we do the human crab but in other aspect branded fabric we can buy 2000 rupees we go to mall movie ki ticket 500 rupees mein khareed lete popcorn 250 rupees mein le lete hum log lekin jab kisan ki baat aati hai jab oil ki baat aati hai to hum log 10 rupees lene mein hum hi log hamare haath mein pocket mein haath nahi aata with this thank you for listening to me and then some points you can connect with me and i personally feel those who are students you got a huge scope food processing is a future without processing there is no value addition without value addition there is no farmers growth and without processing no safety of the consumer so jaise pm saab ne bola hai ki empowering the consumer empowering the farmer and winning the consumer only food processing and do thank you now i request the talk of shri tagi saab if you can Please, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hilde, Mr. Vivek, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Hardinam uh, is a Indian global brand, and uh, as Mr. Hilde told that we are doing the value addition of the staple food. We are in the 100% value addition of the staple food. I will not go in the detail of the staple food. Mr. Hilde has already briefed in very detail and in a very nice way. Stately, I will go to the value addition. We have three type of the vertical. One vertical we have we are making all type of the frozen food, and we are exporting nearly about 80 countries. This include all type of the naans, all type of the paratha. and all types of the curry whatever you are eating at the home it, it can be the sahi paneer it can be the kadai paneer it can be the mutter paneer it can be chole it can be rajma it can be turi dal etc and every type of the curry so we have approximately more than 50 type of the curry and 20 type of the naans and uh, many type of the combo with the rice just like a Rice rajma, rice chawal, and we are exporting these staple food in value added condition under the brand name of Hindi Ram in nearly 80 countries. And I am very proud to say this is our major portion of the export. Second, as already everybody know, we have the QSR Ram Quick Service Restaurant, in which our thali is very popular, which is a complete Indian meal. in which you find two type of the minimum two type of the vegetables one rice then any lentil it can be the dal it can be the rajma it can be the other lentil we have to change on weekly basis and per day basis and sweet also and third answer is our traditional snack as you know our most of the raw material come from the lentils we are using all type of the lentils to make traditional food and some of our traditional food are very very healthy if you take by example of the moong dal this is 100% lentil with 18% fat only if you take the chana dal it is 100% lentil with 18% fat only so these all are available in around the 80 country 
definitely we are living in pan india but also living in around eighty countries so we have the three vertical in the value addition one is the frozen food which is mainly available in the export market because indian market is not matured so much enough to distribute this type of the frozen food and traditional food is available in pan india as well as export market and qsr daily we have in, in for indian market now come to the background of the hadiram hadiram group is in the company of the business of packing food processing selling grinding namkin snacks sweet papad syrup ready to eat bakery products frozen food to retail and wholesale market currently we have the capacity of 0.4 million ton per annum and we have around 140 restaurant the story of hadiram had started from the bikaner in 1937 followed by we have entered to the delhi market in 1982 after that we have entered to the usa market in 1993 our chairman group chairman is mr manohar lal agarwal and our vice group chairman is mr madhusudan agarwal definitely we serve the indian taste indian ethnic taste to our customer and we will never compromise on the taste quality hygiene safety and currently we have all the plant making the namkin fully automatic with hmi computerized with with minimum human interference so we have done lot of the investment in technology and we have developed the technology from every part of the country and every part of the global where whatever it is our level to making the best namkin to our country we have global presence at food and beverage company through innovation professionalization expansion strategic approach and business acquisition recently in the 4 5 years 6 year we have acquired the brand atas which is the indoor brand which belong to hindi now and second is the edox brand which is also belong to hindi now and baba snack also belong to hindi now our total strength is about 15000 employee are working under hindi now innovation is our passion and we are the first company in india to introduce the package traditional snack in 1990 we are the first company in india to to do 100% automation of traditional snack without human touch pioneer new wave of packaging such as zip pouch standy pouch and we are one of the first company to offer traditional indian street food in a hygienic restaurant environment so these are the and the ram train set we have global presence in around 80 country and we are available in all type of the supermarket supermarket either it is carry for costo globally this is our global fruit prints our 57% of total export will come from the usa and 17% will come from the middle east and 12% come from the euro this is our uh, product for the export market this is our the promotion we have done in different country just like thailand uk and usa and in the thailand we have done the promotion of all type of the frozen food which are well accepted by their consumer also we are our different type of we are i told that we are making 20 type of the naans and we are making more than 50 type of the curry and we are ser ser serving to the global market this is all about stable food and this is our we have put our first plant in the uk for making all type of the indian food this include rasgulla gulab jamun and all type of the sweet just like a moti to laddu barfi etc and we are purchasing the all the raw materials from the uk 
and making their uh, exporting to the global market. This is our UK plant. This is all about the Alina. These are the certification we have got in the Alina. These are the what? So in that sense, we have tried to do the value addition of this type of food and try to reach as much as country globally as we can do. And our all the products globally were accepted by the customer. Now we come to the branding, how we have made the branding. As we are eating the food, the food, the customer cannot eat the food as a medicine. So first parameter to get the food is the taste. If you don't have the taste, you can't create the branding. So definitely our USP is the taste, number one, to create the branding. Our USP number two is the hygienic condition with fully automated. So that we can ensure the 100% food safety to the customer and followed by the innovation. Then distribution, sales and distribution. So for creating brand, either it is a starter brand or it is a old brand. Innovation is the must, number one. And secondly, you can't compromise with the taste and hygiene and food safety is the first priority. So this is the great story and it, is, it will go for the word of the mouth. And I want to declare here that Haldinam has not made any repeat advertisement from the last more than 80 years. <laughs> it is word of, word of the mouth. Our customer is doing the advertisement. Only we do to delight our customer. We put our all the effort by way of the innovation, by way of the automation, by way of the upgradation of the technology, by improving the taste, by improving the quality, by doing the load of the product, innovation, different type of the product, just to delight our customer. So our branding is to delight our customer. Thank you. I think your points were really hats off to the you know, because I am from Nagpur and we grew on the Aldiram product. And we have seen the growth of the Aldiram, the hygiene, the safety, the taste, and Diwali is coming. So we really enjoy your food. And one thing about Aldiram, uh, not because of the Aldiram as a brand, but I think you taught us what hygiene food eats, sleeping. And one more thing, uh, how many of you went abroad? Many people. So naturally, can you raise the hand? How many you go outside? Indians are very good at food eaters. Because Ajay Ji again, Ajay Ji, Ajay Ji, Ajay Ji, when we go out, in the morning, we talk about lunch in breakfast, what we eat in lunch, we talk about dinner, what we will have in the dinner, and dinner, we talk about breakfast. Tom, do you know that? Tom, do you know that? Tom, do you know that? होता है तो ठीक है बट खाना तो हमें चाहिए and always you go and you find the Indian restaurant and you go to Japan we went to Japan मैं और अजय जी गए थे हम लोग restaurant conference में थे there are all Indian restaurant run by Bangladeshis और Nepalis but now है हमारा ताजमहल कोहिनूर श्री कृष्ण रेस्टोरेंट run by not Indian by others the story is that you are one of the strong brand and Indian food is something and staples are those base of the food to make it taste. Thank you sir, really बहुत अच्छा लगा आपका सुनके but हम लोग अभी दावत का वेलकम करेंगे and if you are not at दावत then you didn't have a दावत at home so विवेक जी आप हमें मार्केट के बारे में बताएंगे and how you have made a global presence and how you have made the global brand yes sir जोर से बात Good to be here. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I am to speak on how we can devise effective branding and marketing strategies for the promotion of cereals internationally. So I will not focus on India, which of course we've done an exceptional job in creating the brand Bhavat here. This is all focused on international. I am here to speak on this topic while well, there are so many more distinguished people sitting here on the dais and in the audience people who are perhaps knowledgeable have done this. But I believe I am here because this for me, 
branding, making an Indian company a global multinational, these have been a lifelong passion. And branding and marketing and, take, and building businesses is something that I've done. Uh, he said people here are from, you know, uh, experiences ranging from 25 years above. Uh, I guess I'd be one of the oldest then on the dais because I've done this for 40 years now, of which I've done uh, oh, nothing to clap. If you live long enough, everybody will do it. Uh, and I've done this uh, both in India uh, and internationally. I've led a uh, food business for a British food major for 10 years. Uh, leading that business in uh, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and East Asia. And for the last 12 years, I've been with LT Foods, where I've been charged with taking uh, Dawat uh, globally. We now uh, market our brands in 76 countries. And from Australia on this end, where we've now built a 45% market share, to the US, where we've got a 50% market share. And in between, the other 74 countries, we have the full spread of all market shares that you can think of. So there is something in here in building these shares. We have 20 shares in uh, Europe. Markets like Israel, we run again 20 odd share. Singapore, we have a 20 share. And of course, in our home country, India, we are one of the only two brands with uh, dominant share. We have a 30 share in India. Uh, when I say two dominant brands, there is a clutch of brands and, and there's several who have market shares in single digits. And when you talk of large categories like cereals and pulses, the category is large enough for uh, many brands to survive with single digit shares, shares of 2%, 3%, make those businesses economically viable, moderately profitable. So the category size and staples is called staples for a reason. It's you consume that every day. Staples allows uh, people with you know small share to exist profitably. But we're not talking here about how to survive. We're talking here about how do you thrive. And how do you thrive not just in India, but how do you thrive globally? So, what we see in Staples, and, and you know, uh, Halveji spoke about the 330 million tons of total cereals being produced. Uh, if I talk of rice, out of that, uh, rice is generally around 130 million tons, depends. This year, early forecasts are that there will be 135 million tons of rice. Uh, consumption in India is about 110 million tons. This spread of 20 million tons is what we trade, is what we export as a country. And while it's 20 million tons, it's about 40% of the global rice trade. Now a lot of this just goes for basic substance, uh, subsistence. It goes for food safety or food security for many nations. That is not what I'm talking about. You know, the export of basic process staples, essential for global food systems. India is a big player. Like I mentioned, rice. I think wheat's about 100, 110 million tons of output every year. And the surplus, which is available in wheat, is about 7 to 8 million tons every year, which gets exported. This is the basic level. When we are talking of effective marketing and branding, obviously we're not talking about you know, food which is going for people's food security. What we're talking here is about the premium and more value add product offerings within staples. The Basmati, the business that I am associated with, is in that premium segment. Halveji uh, spoke of rice being something like uh, 25 rupees or 30 rupees, I don't know what it is, because the costliest brand we sell is for 220 rupees a kilo. And how many people pay for it? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, not my, I don't know whose is 800. <laughs> uh, 
But Basmati again, just sort of continuing with that, that's about <coughs> 8 million tons of rice that is made. Paddy is higher, but about 8 million tons of rice, of uh, Basmati rice, sorry. About 3.5 to 4 million tons of that is exported. The unfortunate part is that only a very, very small percent of that 4 million ton goes out in grams. And when you take a premium product like Basmati and sell it as a commodity, you are giving the value add capture to outside the country. It is our farmers who are growing it. It, it is our GI product but the value add is being captured somewhere else. And if you don't have a brand, you cannot have that value capture. And I'm really proud to say that LT Foods, pretty much everything we do is branded. We control the full value chain from procurement till the time it gets onto the consumer's plate. But if that is so, you know, if that is where the value capture is, why don't people do it? Well, there are a few reasons, right? <coughs> Exporters of processed food staples do not try to capture value. And that's why we should be talking here about branding and marketing. The first is it's a lot easier to sell as a commodity than as a brand. Commodity selling at the end of the day comes down to a price negotiation on a given quality. Now that's, there are people who who are experts at doing that, and they do that exceedingly well. Second is that to build a brand is a serious commitment. You cannot flirt around with building a brand. You know, people who believe sponsoring one mega event builds a brand, it does not. In fact, in food, it is my belief, and this is more India specific, that it takes a generation to actually change habits. It takes about 25 years. If you don't believe me, ask the people in Kellogg's who tried to change a food habit are still trying. Or you ask Maggie. And only when that five-year-old girl, when she ate Maggie for the first time, when she became a mother and had a five-year-old, did the product move from an occasional consumption to a daily habit. It took that much time for that conversion to take place. So brand, you don't build brands overnight. And so while brand profits are far higher, they come with a much longer gestation period. While a commodity trading profit earning is today. You make the deal, you get the money today. So that's the other reason why people have stayed in this uh, mind frame of selling commodities and talking of mind frame. Companies who believe that I can do marketing with the same set of people who are doing my trading, who are doing my commodity business, they are different DNAs. So if you're really serious about branding, the next commitment is you have to staff and resource people who can do that. Because beyond the point, Branding is, marketing is not any science. It is a philosophy. You either believe in it or you don't. You know, there's this famous saying, I know 50% of my advertising is wasted. I just don't know which 50%. And that's the belief which says I will keep spending that 100% because at least half of it is how I build my business. Half of it is about how I talk to my consumers. The other big sort of reason of why exporters of staples from India have not gone into, uh, or for food for that matter, you know, broader if you talk of processed food, why the processed food manufacturers have not really embarked on this route is that generally the model that we have followed is that we followed the Indians wherever they went we took the brand. So we've gone and marketed to the diaspora. So our biggest sales come from where you have the largest number of Indians. Now this is a great model because those people do own those brands. 
they are wanting the brands that they are familiar with, they have grown up with, they trust, and if you make that available, that's, you know, it's good business. But that business has this limitation that wherever we are going, we are still a small part of the population. So if you really want to sell to people who are not Indians, that is where you start to run into a lot of barriers. Because you can't give them our food as is. You know, their palates are not used to that. We can't sell the same product. And from a marketing standpoint, you can't sell the same proposition. You have to do something different. And that different, according to me, is that to, if you have to really succeed there, you have to behave like a company which is local in that country. So remember I spoke about this whole piece on commitment? The next thing you will have to decide is which country am I committing to? And it's not just about the market size, which we must of course look at, or what competencies we have to succeed there. Before you commit to a country, you've also got to figure out what sort of a regulatory environment is there? You also have to figure out what sort of compliances environment you are getting in because food is a highly regulated subject. For staples, pesticide residues is going to be one of the biggest things that you, you need to be looking at. So you need to be looking at environment. When we, you know, we used to read about environment scam, didn't know what it meant. Did you actually go and get your containers being rejected? Then you know what environment scan is all about. There are consumers who are somewhere in the world looking at and saying, ethical sourcing, sustainability are the things that really matter to me. And if you can't deliver that, then you shouldn't be there. But coming back to saying, you know, what you need to be thinking, if we believe our food is just going to sell as is, it's not. So, we have to understand what food people consume there. More importantly, how does our product interface with their cuisine? How is it used? What do they look for from our cuisine? If I try and sell just because China is the biggest consumer of rice in the world, I can't sell basmati to them because they go for sticky rice. And so suddenly everything changes. So it's about your product in their cuisine. And within that, what are they looking for that will make a difference to them? This, you know, typically we talk about what is the functionality of my product which will give me an edge, a superiority, something to get into their plates. Of course, as a brand builder, you also do need to be thinking about not just the functionality, about what does food mean to them? When I communicate, not only how do I have relevance, but how does the brand become endearing? And then of course, cultural sensitivities. There are countries which respond much more to rational, functional communication, and there are countries which respond to emotional. And of course, if your category is underdeveloped, more you have to sell your functionality. So to do this, for example, LP Foods now, we have offices in Los Angeles for Americas, in Rotterdam for Europe, in Dubai for Middle East, staffed by locals who understand those consumers and those markets. And of course, we are staffed in India, it's our head office. The other part of interfacing is the products and the new products. And again, we've set up an R&D center in, in the US, and which is staffed only by Americans and Europeans. And then we have an R&D center in India, which is for the Indians. And the two de design very different products, because they're talking to two very different palettes. In other words, all I'm saying is that if you have to, if you decide to succeed somewhere in some country, you have to do exactly, replicate, the processes and the organizations which made you successful in India. Now, the, beyond that, when I'm saying about investing in a country, beyond that, it is about understanding their cultural sensitivities and what you can and cannot do or say with your brands. 
I think this is at a overall level in terms of how we built this. I'd like to conclude with another sort of last point on building the brand. And I, while I've talked about localization, local models, I think the biggest piece in brand marketing is the fact that the core of the brand cannot change. The basic reason for existence for a brand, its purpose, that is constant. And you must clearly articulate what difference your brand makes to consumers' lives. Because at a basic level, what consumers respond to at a deeper level is what a brand stands for much more than what a brand does. So long before we end up defining positioning, tonality, what's the look and feel, you have to decide, decide the basic purpose and clearly articulate it. I just want to end by saying that building brands is something that food processing as a sector should think about. Why do we have a dominant share in agri-commodity export, but only a minuscule share in the world trade in food processing? Even in a, country, a region like Middle East, which grows no food of its own, imports everything culturally so similar to us. In processed food, we hardly sell them anything. As a nation, we really have to move up the value chain. We need to become exporters of packaged, branded foods rather than commodities. We must also overcome the negative perception which Indian processed food has internationally about quality and hygiene. And the government and the private sector must work together in creating that ecosystem, whether it's of labs, testing protocols, training food processors, in hygiene, in quality. We need to create that because processed food is directly consumed, it's not cooked, so there is nothing you can change about it, and therefore trust about its source is exceedingly important. We need to make sure the government is participant in that, they need to be vigilant, they need to bring errant manufacturers to task, and we really just do need to make the compliance and the you know, FSSAI environment more practical than theoretical and rigid. And if we do all of this together, we can create India as a club, as a hub for global food. Thank you very much. Thank you. Value wine. We know that because I come from the oil industry and the loose oil means there is no credibility of the purity. And then whether you are buying as a basmati, it's a basmati or it's only with bas. So this is also difficult. So really good points and we wanted you to continue and I didn't want to stop you but you only stopped. But uh, really sir, we were mesmerized to listen to you and more to you. Now please give a big hand, really good point and we can have questions. Friends, now we have got a very important person. And uh, there is a story behind it, why I am saying very important. I am a book lover and I have one of the, my finest book which I always like and I carry a book I too had a dream by Morgis Kurian Sahib. How many have read this book? This see, should be a mandated book for every agri and food product engineer or food processing. I too had a dream. Amazing piece of book. It is available on the Amazon. Please read it. How one person who didn't want to join the business of dairy come to Gujarat and that to a Kerala and that way back in 1949 and 52 <coughs> after his IS exam passed and he had a choice to go to Pakistan or India and he came to India and then he started this all very movement and amazing way how a technical person can lead the complete white revolution. Correct sir? So we have a managing director of Amul. Please give him a big hand. <laughs> Hey Jain Mehta sir, and we want to know about sir, again, 100% uh, after COVID, 200% number one. And one of the responsible is food. And sir is going to talk about some aspect of the quality of the product, how they made it through the, their cooperatives and all organic also. And your story sir. Thank you. Thank you Prabhuji. Dear friends, who are spending a Saturday morning in hope of having a hamper like I am. 
All of us deserve that. Tyagiji, Tyagiji, today you are you are a busy man. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, the topic for today's session is Processing India's Table for Global Consumption and my introduction has happened as a Dudhwala which I have, uh, which I have for the last 33 years working with Amul. I had a fortune, great fortune of working with Dr. Kumia directly for most of my career. And we have seen the journey of Amul. We saw the initial slide, our India staple story went from a very small base to a very large volume. So milk also has a similar story from uh, just uh, India was very bad quality milk in the country. The Britishers, of course, didn't look after our dairy industry. India was known as a land of milk and honey. Milk is a part of our life since Stanley Memorial, Lord Krishna, mythology, Makkhan, all is a part of our life and story. But the industry was in a very bad shape. And it was said that the gutter water of London was bacteriologically superior than the milk available in the city of Norfolk. So it started with two village cooperative societies in 1946. Sardar Patel inspired the farmers of Gujarat to form a cooperative to avoid the exploitation at the hands of the middlemen and the private babies who were supplying milk to Bombay. So Bombay was identified as a market. They started with two villages, two 47 liters of milk. And today, at Amul, we are handling close to 300 net liters of milk every day. <laughs> Coming from 36 lakh farmers across 18,600 villages of Gujarat. And this model of Amul was replicated across India. Uh, making India the largest producer of milk in the world. Today, India produces close to 220 million metric tons of milk. Almost one fourth of the total milk in the world is produced in India. Next 10 years, it will be about one third of the total milk, and India will become a daily to the world. And in the process, Amul has also become a large brand, a brand which is trusted by millions of consumers in India, more than 50 countries around the world, a turnover of 72,000 crores, $9 million last year, making it among the eighth largest in the world and the largest FMCG in the food brand in the country also. So this is where we could take a simple commodity, a simple product which gets perished, I mean, this guy has a short shelf life of four hours into making a brand which is sold internationally. I'm here now not talking about the real milk part of it. We are now mandated to do this task as a cooperative for agricultural products and also in the organic space. So I'm here now going to talk to you as a startup. A startup of two new multi-state cooperatives which have been recently launched by the government of India, inspired by the government of India and promoted by five to seven top cooperatives of the country. Amul, IFCO, Cripco, NAFED, NCDC, National Consumer Cooperative Federation. It's between seven of us, we are incubating three new multi-state cooperatives. One is multi-state cooperative on exports. Second is multi-state cooperative on organics. And third is a multi-state cooperative on seeds. The success of the whole model actually demonstrated the power of the collective, power of the cooperative, benefits like women empowerment, and more importantly, passing on the largest share of the consumer's rupee to the producer. So for today, milk or milk products, if you spend 100 rupees, 80 to 85 percent goes back to the producer. And the branded advantage of branding, marketing, and the entire supply chain is a benefit which accrues to the farmer because he owns the entire structure. I will call it she because large number of women are involved. So if a woman owns this brand, which is the largest, most uh, uh, strongest brand in the world, and gets the largest share of the benefit of what the consumer spends. This demonstrates the how the cooperatives work. And the new Ministry of Cooperation formed by the Government of India a couple of years back, they realized that cooperative is a tool for development of the small and marginal section of the society. We talk about India's farming industry, we talk of India's agriculture, Prabhuji talked about large number of people employed in agriculture, but the value share of agriculture is very low. So the, here was a thought that if we hand over this opportunity of taking the future in our own hands as cooperatives, inculcate the spirit of cooperation across the country and focus on two, three very important aspects which plague the Indian agriculture and the small Indian farmer is basically the price discovery, the market mechanism and access to different parts of the world. So first, this is where the objective of this new multi-state cooperative on exports is. And there are several export opportunities. 
uh, uh, we were told about the exports of uh, products as government to government support, product support exports in the food security, products export as a branded uh, market opportunity, and the future lies in all of these spaces. So the new multi-state export cooperative has this job of creating a market of products and not just agricultural products, any products manufactured by any cooperative in the country to different parts of the world. So it will be a single window export house for all the cooperatives of the country. And believe me, there are more than 30 crore people as members of different cooperatives across the country. So this is this is what is this new organization, which is a startup actually, which just started a few months back. Honorable Home Minister announced this launch uh, last week itself in Delhi. And this is what the opportunity lies for us. We are lucky to have orders worth more than 8,000 crores or 1 billion dollars of different agricultural products to several countries. But let me tell you, this is just the beginning. Their cooperatives dominate in various spaces, like sugar. Most of the production of the sugar is by the cooperatives. But the share of cooperatives in exports of sugar is hardly 1%. And once the export part is also taken up by the cooperatives, both in commodity as well as branded form, the share of revenue realization out of this product also will flow back as profits, similar to what the army model is, back to the farmers. And the same would apply to rice, same would apply to wheat, same would apply to onions, same would apply to garlics, to ginger, to pulses, to all sorts of things. So this is where this organization will start focusing on processing or basically collection of the entire set of agricultural products from the farmers, strengthening the primary agricultural cooperative societies, strengthening the procurement system, strengthening the processing system, strengthening the marketing, market access, commodity, branding, and all that stuff. And these are, believe me, well funded, and there is no involvement directly from the government. Each of the five promoters, which in case of exports is Amui, IFCO, Cripco, NCDC, and NAFED, each one of us is putting 100 crores each, and the total cash share capital will be 2,000 crores. So it's well funded by the cooperatives, for the cooperatives, and for the market. And to put it things in perspective, because there was one Bombay, Anand and Amun succeeded, here we are looking at the whole world, 180 countries, 8 million people, for the success of the producers of different agricultural corporate commodities of our country. And second part, now we look at us as Indian consumers. Prabhuji talked about the increases in incidences of cancer in our country. All of us want to eat food without pesticides. All of us also want to eat food without, which is made without chemical fertilizers. Unfortunately, this is a reality in our country. Organics, natural farming, prakruti, all are multiple sides of the same coin. But fact is that all of us believe in the regenerative economy of uh, agriculture, regenerative practices of agriculture, natural practices of agriculture, and producing food without chemical fertilizers and pesticides. The farmers know the benefit of producing food without any of these things. Unfortunately, we followed a path which was of using rampant uh, fertilizers, which has deteriorated the quality of the soil, degraded the quality of the soil, reduce the, the carbon content of the soil and the productivity of the soil, which puts us as 1.4 billion people whose mouths we have to feed daily uh, at risk. So th we needed an organization which could spearhead this initiative. And that's where this new multi-state cooperative on organics has been created, again promoted by NDDB, IFCO, CRIPCO, NCCF, and NCC, NCDC along with Amul, and we will do the job of encouraging the farmers to get into organic production, certified organic production, and creating a market for all these products across the country. Statistics say that half of the organic producers in the world are from India. It's more than about 15, 16 lakh certified farmers in India. Ex our share of the total organics is less than 4%. So this is where, again, an opportunity lies for us. There is a world market which is waiting for organic foods. More than importantly, there is a large number of population in India, and perhaps everyone wants to consume food without pesticides and chemical fertilizers. And 
This is where this new multi-state cooperative will also play this role in providing good and safe and healthy food and more importantly democratizing organics. Today the premium on organics is two or times, three times, four times. Then the staple prices of the regular products. This is where actually we lose on the market opportunity because the purchasing power is a constraint. So this is where this new organization will do the job. At Amul, we already started working on a range of organic products. More, we have more than 15 items. Atta is there, uh, rice is there, different types of dal, pulses are there. We'll be soon launching organic sugar, jaggery, spices, and so on. So every item you would have in your household will be an Amul organic product. But more importantly, this new multi-state cooperative will look after this entire value chain from farmer to the consumer, focus rightly on, more on the domestic market because our priority is our country, but then the export also will be done by this new multi-state cooperative on organics, uh, on exports. And that's what we try to make India healthier and more importantly, the farmers uh, bringing prosperity to their doorstep around the, around the year over a large number of years. So thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, we will look forward to your input and contribution in making success of these two three new multi state cooperatives. Thank you so much. You said you are a startup but you are one of the oldest cooperative and then startup is a new venture. So we wish you all best luck and definitely it will be a great success because you are whatever you have touched, Amul has touched, made a success. So there is no doubt. What Mehta Saab has talked about two things about empowering the consumer, empowering the farmer, empowering the woman and the linkage with the woman empowering and what has actually made you success in the dairy and no doubt it will be replicated. So not organic you talked very very important point and today we go to the market and we see it's organically grown organical product but lack the certification. So I just want to also make sure that because FSS has launched the organic Jaggi Bharat certification scheme, without that, if somebody is selling, just saying that it is a homegrown organic, but I think that is not correct. It has to be certified. And we have Nilesh Amrutkar and tasting is very important. So anybody from the analytical, without getting qualified, it's like I cannot say I am 10th standard pass or BTEC or PhD without a degree from the university or college, same way. Now sir, I have some questions and then a lot of people are there and by the way, I convinced while the speaker were talking, each some each of the speaker have agreed to give one hamper, so we have three. And then I have also agreed to give one hamper, so four. And instantly you will get our card, our visiting card, go to the their respective stall and collect the hamper. So this is so easy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Do they have to do the they sir? Quick problem. Do. No, we have thank you, sir. We have convinced that one to two did, and our Omar Sahib is sitting behind. Then they will be coming. Then three will be. Omar Sahib, please come in front. Our director Nitin, please go to the side. Omar Sahib, I request you come on the dais only. Please, please. Oh, Ma'am, please get up. Please, please, sir, come. Please, please come on the dais. Sir, over here, sir, please. No, no, please, please. please. Ah, yes. Yeah. Over here, sir, it's a very interesting thing. No, sir, you sit in the beach. Look, the director is getting his own chair. That's the limit. Okay, so I have a question and I also request over here, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining here. Uh, if you also have very interesting discussion happened, sir. So now the question goes to Taggy sir. Lot of food technology students are sitting and earlier food processing and export was considered as like non-technical. It is like anybody can process, anybody can sell. There is no quality importance. So our youth, the food technologists, they will tell you sir, what is your success mantra? What is your success mantra? What is your success mantra? What is the mantra for them? Please sir, quickly. Can you help please for the... Yeah. If I tell him the one word, so he may definitely be customer with it. That student, we have food technology grade, just tell me by common sense what is the difference between customer delight and customer satisfaction. Please come out. Anyone? 
Hamper pakka. Hamper. Uh, what about the light means uh, to get repeat and 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 repeat I can say before 10 years, we are made tell customer satisfaction. But after 10 years, from before 5, 10, 8 years, we have started customer delight. So you are very right, the customer delight beyond the customer expectation. You are clear that the customer to be able to deny it. So basically. Customer ke alawa kya de sakte hain. That is the innovation. So our success of the mantra is customer delight. Yeah.
So this message through our channels, through our web program, through the KBKs, through ICR network, through State Research University. So yeah. you are giving it this, sir. So one question, sorry, sir, of course. Okay, uh, can you have his uh, small token? Sir, Charlie. Okay, sir, if you can honor uh, Vivekji. We make you a seventy one gentleman for the gift hamper to your shop. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. I will send you that. Thank you. Okay. One question to Mehta sir. Sir, uh, you have big dream and it comes with the point of. So, in short, one minute, what are the key challenges which you are looking at? Which food technology and because the students are sitting here and the lot of startups are sitting here. So what are the key challenges which you are foreseeing and how we can use those converting as opportunity, if any technology. Yes, I am happy that the new generation is very much sitting here and uh, they will be actually doing what all the dreams or the vision of most of the organizations. More importantly, the country's vision and dream they will be executing. Uh, so food becomes a very, very important part of it and I am happy that you are our students of food and technology. Technology is never going to go out of fashion. Food is never going to go out of fashion. Baki, there are many other things which will replace and uh, take, uh, will be, you will see several industries uh, going up and down and so on also. So the, you are at the right cusp of both technology and food. Food will take very, very different shapes. As we evolve as a society, as our income increases, as our purchasing power increases, the importance of food, not just as food, which is calories, it will be more of nutrition. You will look at the macro nutrition, you will look at the micro. Okay, macro will be fat, protein, carbohydrates. Micros will be the vitamins, micros will be the difference of parts of protein, which I will have just mentioned. And every single thing you will try to make it. So what eventually, as a society, we need, right now, we, it started with roti kapda maka, taking care of the hunger. Then we take care of the macros, then you take care of the personalized nutrition, and eventually each one of us will design and have a tailor made diet. So, this is where the awareness comes in, this is where the science comes in, this is where the food comes in, the components of food come in, and the goodness of every single thing we have to harness and tailor make it for not just 1.4 billion people of our country, but 8 billion people in the world. Because this is where India has the opportunity of being the food basket in the world. So, you are the guys who Drive it, you are the girls you are going to make it possible, and this is what we as a country will be able to do. Health becomes very important, immunity becomes very important, nutrition uh, sub components become very important, and this is where uh, what is the goodness of food, and actually, only with food you can do what you want to do in life. So, this is where uh, happy that you are here, contributing it in a very big way, and you are the guys and the women who will take this and direction forward. Wish you all the best. Thank you, Energy. are open for membership of the cooperatives and we would welcome any farmer connect and farmer initiative into this. So we will share the details on the website and then we will be happy to connect every single farmer uh, for this particular issue. Thank you. Uh, Slightly different, uh, generally we never give franchise of our restaurant to anybody. We are the company operating. Currently we have about uh, 160, 170 sold and this is uh, because for every 10 or 12 sold, you require a base. Yeah. So, whatever uh, definitely will enter to the Gujarat also, but maybe later on. So, you can't ignore the Gujarat. We have to put in the base in and in the Gujarat. Tell me that uh, lad about food and sweets. Like, I, I don't have sweet food, but I like Hazira uh, Lagu. And Gujarati that before we serve food, we have to serve sweet. So that is there. Yeah, we are very thankful for you. Yeah.
Thank you, Vice Commander Asso. But uh, recently we have opened some of the restaurants in Mumbai. So we are going back to Kolkata. So Sir, uh, after some time, maybe next five six. Uh, because the next session is starting, I want any student want to ask question. So we will discuss uh, because we have interacted. Sir, sorry, but oh, so, pura to presentation hoyi tha yaar. Pure Rama ne kya baat ab puch rahe Ram ki sita ko. Sir, sir, challenges, short challenges like in the terms of trade and the policies that we have seen. So just the key points. So you want to take sir, what are the key challenges of export? I think sir, ab to itne country ne export kar rahe aur main kya samjhe sir? Definitely we have to create a brand. We have to create differentiation in the product and we have to create the brand. Just like in the example that we have given, that the country we have to see the specific need also. So we have also you have to survey. Suppose you want to target the US market, then you have to survey the US market and what is the customer need and how your product can be fulfilled in that customer need and how you you can make the brand. Shubham, I will. Uh, we will connect. Shubham, I'll just add on to it. This will benefit everybody. The, the Food Safety Stand Act is going for amendment now. That's going to be placed in the latest session of parliament. Where now it's made mandatory that all the export material, whichever border goes from India, has to follow the national standards, the Me bare too. national standards. Otherwise, what is happening is when we are exporting something, some of the countries, the, the lesser known countries, we used to reject our consignment, saying that it is not following complying with your country's regulations, though it's complying with my country's regulations. So now that amendment is coming. That's why. Thank you. Uh, in yes, sorry, I want to add. Already uh, very right. You have to follow the national standard, but also you have to follow U.S. standard because some of the U.S. standard are different from the national. Yeah, natural. We have to lay out, log the line to the name. Okay. So I have two. Uh, we got one winner. What is the name, sir? Can we cut there? Sorry. Wrong answer. No, no, no. Raise your hand. I will ask you. Google, Google, no problem, sir. Sir, correct. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, Okay, last question from my side. Uh, when Hazira entered to US here? 1993. 1993. Sir, correct? Yeah, two A, three A. हाँ, जब आ जाओ भी ले लो और एक बार ले। Sir, आपने sir. अच्छा, I also have a small, so I I also can give my card and one good hamper. Question. Modi साहब ने अन्न के बारे में कुछ तीन चीजें बोली थी इफ एनी बडी कैन रिमेम्बर अन्न कैसे खाना चाहिए कितना खाना चाहिए फास्ट परसों बोली बहुत ही सटीक बोली थी अगर याद होगा तो बोलो मीठा आहार ऋतु आहार चलो यार दो आहार ही बहुत हो गए और बीबी का आहार आज जो बीबी पका है वो आहार सर मैरिड लोगों को ज्यादा ऑप्शन नहीं होता सर यू कम टू माय स्टॉल आई विल यू थैंक यू फॉर वंडरफुल ऑडियंस आई वाज वरीड की मॉर्निंग में जितने लोग स्टेज पे उतने लोग नीचे दिख रहे थे मॉर्निंग में 9:45 बट थैंक्स फॉर ऑल द वंडरफुल ऑडियंस यू आल्सो तालिया एंड आई रिक्वेस्ट इन इज आवर या Sir, uh, I request the professor if you can honor the all our participants, those who gave a very good uh, speech today. Starting with Netaji. Thank you, sir. Who has the right to call him?